I was uh, asking you about um, Lutzi International, but uh, was that the first place you met Andre the Giant, or did you meet him um, way before the, that promotion was around? Actually, uh, I met Andre the Giant uh, before that because my father and my uncle, they owned the territory here in Quebec, Canada. And uh, they were running the whole province. They were running the Montreal Forum, which is an institution for the uh, National Hockey League, the Montreal Canadiens. And, uh, and uh, the Paul Sauvé Arena every Monday night was like our church for us. We'd go to the wrestling Monday night. And I met Andre the Giant when I was about, uh, I must have been maybe six, seven years old. And I'm 61 now, so it's been quite a bit there, maybe 55 years ago. And uh, Andre the Giant was such an impressive guy. I have so many stories on him. I don't know where to start. Uh, was he Jean Ferrer <laughs> at the time when uh, he first came? Exactly. In? Yeah, exactly. Jean Ferrer. And he'd come from France. He was living in Paris, I believe. And, uh, and yeah, well, an amazing man. But as I grew up knowing Andre from different eras, because the era of my father and my uncle was, I'm talking about the early 70s. And, uh, and then came the uh, Lutte Internationale that you're talking about is in the early 80s. So we're talking about 10 years later. And, uh, and, I, and it was a different approach because uh, he always liked my uncle and my father because they booked them. So they were good friends. So he always kind of took care of me a little bit. Uh, he always looked after me as his little cousin from Quebec. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but, uh, but, but we grew into a nice relationship, him and I, during the years that when I left, uh, when I was doing Lutte Internationale here in Montreal, I was doing between the 80, uh, 77 all the way to uh, 85. Uh, those seven years I did, or eight years I did, was uh, for Dino Bravo, Rick Martel, and Gino Brito, and those guys that were running the business with Andre the Giant, who owned part of the business. And um, But I was doing a lot of, uh, during the winter, uh, I was doing a lot of traveling in small territories around the world. I'd go to Mexico. I go. I went to Mexico in '78. I went to Kansas City '79. Nick Goulas in Nashville in '80, and I went to Atlanta, Georgia in '81 by TBS, which was a Turner Broadcast System at the time, was one of the biggest. And every small territory that I do when I was gone from Montreal during the winter time. They, know what, they would always fly Andre the Giant in as a main event, a special main event in those small territories. So I'd meet him again, you know, once in a while. And then that's where I, I started playing cribbage. I don't know if you know the game uh, crib. I can, you know? I can play crib, but that was actually my next question. Did he teach you how to play cribbage? I taught him. No, no, oh, no. did you? <laughs> <laughs> no, no. We, actually, it's my mom who taught me how to play crib. My mom was a good crib player, but Andre and I, Andre at the beginning used to whip my butt quite a bit. He was an excellent crib player. But you know, when you play with the best all the time, you get good. And I was a quick learner and a good learner. So I ended up at the end there. We'd always play for some small money, some small change, you know, like $10, $20 in the evening. But before the matches when we were sitting in the dressing room and, and we were really battling out at the end. And, but the best part of all that for me was not playing crib with Andre. I, I love playing crib with Andre. But the best part was on these long flights that we had to do. Like sometimes we had a four, five, six hour flight. And, and, and I was always sitting with most of the boys. I was sitting in economy class. But he was sitting in first class all the time because he was too big. And, and actually he was sitting in first class and the seat beside him was always empty because his elbow and his arm was almost halfway through the bent the seat right beside him so every time we'd go to take off it was so funny because all the boys would be in the back and then the flight attendant would come by and I'd say is Jacques Rougeau here somewhere and I'd say yeah that's me and they say your ass up front so I'd be, <laughs> doing, I'd be flying first class the whole time you know when he was on the trip so I was hoping I was always hoping he was on my show <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah, so did did he catch any did he catch any heat for uh, getting in the first class seats from the other yeah, guys? Yeah, I'd say yeah, I'd say I picked up a little heat there. Yeah, but uh, <laughs> but, uh, but it wasn't because I was going to play up in first class that I had to meet. It was my arrogance when I was going up there, like you know. <laughs> You know, that's where I got the heat. <laughs> oh dear. I tell you, I can't I can't uh, ask Andre questions, and they're all gonna be the obvious ones, but I'm hoping you've got some stories. The most you ever saw Andre drink in one sitting. Oh my god, that's a you know, I, I, I it's funny because we were leaving in the morning, like sometimes at seven in the morning to, to to fly to the next town, the next country, and Andre was already drinking. You know, Andre must have been drinking almost 24 hours a day. 
but you know, we got to understand something here. You know, a lot of people, they point at him, you know, and they, they criticize him for that. But let, let me put you in context. Uh, 24 hours a day, Hulk Hogan is sitting in, a, in an airport and people come up to ask him for a signature. And he was always nice, always, Hulk was always nice to everybody. No matter how tired he was, no matter what time it was, he would always make someone happy by doing an autograph. But when it came to Andre, the people didn't always come up to an autograph for him. The people would come close to him and they'd go like, <laughs> look at that, look at him, look at that monster, look at, so, so eventually, uh, he became very unhappy with that situation. And there were some people that were obnoxious and some people that were really rude. And some people, sometimes they were idiots. You know, like they, 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 I remember one time I was, I was in a, in a restaurant bar after a show one time, we went to eat and, and, and I swear as much as Gino Breeder will tell you the story, but uh, it was in Val d'Or up North in Quebec. And there was this guy that, uh, he was half drunk and he, and he just came up to him. He had th two, three of his buddies with him. And, you know, he wanted to show that he was tough or that he wasn't afraid. And he just provoked Andre. And, and Andre just turned around and he, he exploded on, you know, and, and, and he went to grab the guy. And the guy started running outside the club. And when he got outdoors, the club, Andre followed him. So all the guys followed him, too. And when he got outside, these guys, there was three guys, I believe. They got into a Beetle. You know those Volkswagen yeah, Beetles? Course, yeah. And then, uh, like, chitty, 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 bang, bang. But you don't know that. You're too old. I, but, uh, I've you're, got that on DVD. I love like, that <laughs> film, yeah. So, so so he went and he took the car and he flipped it on its top. Completely flipped the car over. And the guys were in the car. And that's a story that I'll never, never forget. Because I never saw it happen. I was in the bar when it happened. And when Andrew went out, the guys went out. I, I didn't follow. And, and, and I don't know what the reason was for But when I came back, Gino was saying, Jesus Christ, he flipped the car over. He flipped the car <laughs> over. And, and, and another thing, I seen him do that time, which is amazing. I never, I don't think I'll ever see another man do that on this earth. He took a, the battery of a car battery and, and he picked it up with one hand. He just showed me with one hand he could pick up a battery. And, you know, I have a hard time with my two hands, you know, but, 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 but. So he had this amazing strength. He was this amazing guy who was sour of being a freak. And, and, and when people would come up to him, not always nice to him, then I've seen the other side of Andre, or sometimes I was so embarrassed and I felt so bad because sometimes it was nice people that would come up to him, but at the wrong time. Mm. And then they'd come up to him. He just doesn't, he wasn't feeling good. And I seen Andre just turn around and look at a, a person, a normal person and say, oh, fuck off, you know? And like, <laughs> and then I go like, Holy shit. You know, like, Andre, you can't do that. You know, you can't say that. We were playing crib, you know, and stuff like that. And I felt embarrassed. But, but, but knowing all the dirty looks and the freak looks and everything that he was looked at, the way he was looked at, I understand him. I may have got tired of it too. And, and so, so it was, it was a situation that was, I think he was at the end of his days. Uh, he was very, uh, uh, sad when his father passed away his father passed away i believe he passed away not long after that yeah he was uh, at the funeral in france wasn't he um and then he and then andre died like maybe a few days a couple of weeks later i think exactly exactly yeah so he was a very unhappy man i think andre was happy when he was sitting with me and when we were playing crib andre really and when he wasn't sitting with me playing crib he was sitting with arnold scolan the agent that was in there, he, we were the two guys that would play with Andre uh, day in and day out, you know, every mm. time we met. So he was a good friend of mine. I, I loved Andre. He was always good to me. Was uh, Andre, uh, because uh, as you say, people came up and pointed him and, and, and you know, uh, made him feel bad and everything. But he did get quite a lot, a lot of attention from the ladies as well, didn't he? You know, I couldn't tell you that. I, I couldn't tell you that. I remember after my crib games, I didn't follow him, oh. but I'll tell you. <laughs> Uh, to be honest with you, I, uh, I'm surprised you're telling me that because uh, you, you're probably going to teach me something because the only thing I know about girls is I saw one picture one time where Andre the Giant had two girls on each arm, like, you know, sitting on each arm for, for a promotional picture. You know, like he had four girls in his arms, like two on each side. But that was for a promotional picture. I've never seen Andre's girlfriend. 
I never seen him go out with a girl. I never seen him date a girl. So, so you're, 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 and I didn't see him date a man either. Now I'm just <laughs> saying, I, I just never seen it. 